Hello guys, welcome to another video. I'm Adi from Pixel Profits and this is part 3 in a series of guides on how to use Audacity. In previous parts of this series we've looked at how to set up Audacity and how to record and use some of the basic functions. In this part we're going to look at how to edit an audio file. So if you missed the other parts of this series, links are appearing on the screen right now and I'll also put them in the description below. By the end of this series you're going to know all the way through from recording an audio clip, editing it, and then applying noise removal effects and effects to make your voice sound better. So if you're interested in those things, stick with me and check out the whole of this series. I'm gonna put timestamps also in the description below. And if you like this video, then leave me a like. Also make a comment and share the video if you want to with someone that might find it interesting. Also subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell so that you see when we release new content. Okay, so we have here a clip that we recorded in the previous video, and I'm gonna use this to test out some of the stuff from the tools toolbar. Now that's not the best name for a toolbar, I know, but it does contain some of the most important or the most commonly used things. So let's take a look at what those are now. So F1 on the keyboard selects the selection tool, it's pretty self-explanatory and we've used it already. So let's move on to F2, which is actually the envelope tool. Now the envelope tool is, uh, it creates these blue lines and these two gray areas here. I'll just flick back to the selection tool and they'll disappear. And flick back to the envelope tool and they're back again. What does this do? Well, basically it modifies the volume of the clip. So let's start by left clicking a few places along the blue line here and this inserts control points onto this line and we can use those to drag them around and change the level of the audio so you'll see there that I've done quite a drastic change but I need to do that so that you guys can see um, or notice the difference if you like so let's fade it right out completely and Go back to the selection tool. Let's play and see how it sounds. Hello guys and welcome to this Pixel Profits tutorial. Today we'll be looking at the basics of recording in Audacity. Okay, so it's, um, you know, you can see the volume has changed quite considerably. But let's undo those effects because uh, they're going to sound terrible, of course. And we're back to the start again. Moving on then, F3 is the pen tool. Now before we use that, let's just hit F1 for the selection tool. Let's zoom in using control and one, you know that's my preferred method now. I'm just gonna select an audio part that's you know kind of something going on. And as we zoom in, we get to the level where we see these dots. Now these dots are the individual samples, so we can manipulate those using the pen tool. Let's hit F3, select that tool. And now, let me just zoom in one more. There we go. Now if you, um, if you left click above one of these samples, it will draw it up to that point. And you can do it again. If you move to the side slightly accidentally, then you're gonna end up drawing one of the others up. Now, to avoid actually, um, if we, you know, we're not very good with our mouse, and we move to the side, to avoid that happening, if we go to one of the points and we hold down control, now when we draw, uh, even if we move left and right, look, nothing happens to any of the others except the one where we selected when we were holding control, and we're still holding control now. So control allows you to make sure that you only uh, touch the sample you want. Now why would you use this tool? Well, if you had an area like this where it was quite quiet oh, and suddenly a click, well, what we could do is we could draw back down this area, of course, and sort of put it back in line with the rest of the file. And hopefully that would mask that clip, um, or the clicking sound that it will create quite nicely. Now if we wanted to just smooth that out a little bit, what we can do is we can hold down Alt on the keyboard and it changes to this paintbrush tool. And if we just left click and just drag, you have to do multiple clicks, but you can see maybe that they're just, the samples are moving very slightly as I'm clicking and it's smoothing things out basically. So that's a nice subtle way to just make those small changes to smooth things out and make everything how you want it. All right, that's pretty much the draw tool. And like I said, you can use that to draw out areas of the audio that you didn't like. 
uh, that didn't sound good, like clicks and pops and all kinds of weird noises. Let's move on to the zoom tool, F4. We've covered this already, right? Zooming in with left click, zooming out with a right click. And there we can see we're coming back to the default. I'm going to hit Control 2 now just to get back to the default. Because we covered that tool already, we won't go into it too much more. There really is not much more to it than I've just shown you. So F5 brings us up with a time shift tool. What is this? Well, you can see these two arrows have appeared. And if we left click and hold on our audio clip and then we start dragging, you can see you can actually move it along the timeline. Now, as well as moving it left and right along the timeline, you can also grab a clip from another track. And as long as you get past the one you're already on, if I move up, it stuck it onto the end of, or sorry, the same track as our other clip. So we can obviously bring it back again using time shift tool. So it's not just um, moving it forward and backwards in time, it's actually moving it between tracks. That's the time shift tool. Quite useful for um, re-recording a part and then inserting it into the uh, previous recording that you made, if you made a mistake or something like that. So it's quite good to know about. Um, that brings us on to F6, which is the multi-tool. Now what does the multi-tool do? Well, it does everything else, or pretty much everything that the um, other tools do, but in one tool. So using this tool could save you time, but what does it do? How does it work? Well, here you can see that I've got the selection tool selected, even though I'm on the multi-tool. And if I left click, you know, yep, it's moving around. But here we see our envelope again. Uh, so when I move up off of the, um, out of this area, you can see there it's got the envelope and here it's also got the envelope. So we can actually manipulate the envelope using this tool. But then if we go to the audio clip and we zoom in a little, let's do that now. And as we go zoom in and we get those individual samples popping up, oh look, we have the pen tool back. Let's zoom back out again to the default. Now what we can also do is hold control and now it becomes the time shift tool. So it's pretty much trying to be a um, smart way to use all the tools using just one tool and it tries to anticipate what you'd want to do when you were over a certain part of the project. This could save you time. If you like it and you like using it, then go ahead. Um, it's probably a time saver. Okay, well, let's take a look at some keyboard shortcuts now, some further ones that we haven't uh, covered already. Some pretty basic ones that you'll find in most programs. If we hit Control and A on the keyboard, we'll select everything, the entire... Uh, audio file or the entire project if you like. We can also select a portion of the audio. Let's say this click here that we didn't, we sort of got when we were recording. I, I'd put that in on purpose actually so that we had something to look at for one of the future videos. But if we didn't like that, we can select it here and then we could hit delete. And you see now it's been removed. The only thing is obviously that's dragged the entire clip uh, back slightly in the timeline. So a different way to do that might be to use the silence option up here, which doesn't have a, uh, I've set control and L, but believe it doesn't have a default hotkey, but you can just go up here or set a hotkey. And if we click that, you see it just silences it out. Now that basically creates a, a zero amplitude um, part of the clip there. So that's a good way to get rid of some stuff as well without actually affecting the length of the clip. So we can also insert silence into the file by uh, choosing a portion of that audio file. And then we go to generate silence and it asks us how long do we want to generate silence for? It's actually taken my selection now. So we'll go with that and I'll add in a portion of silence. So it's going to actually, let's, Try again because it didn't seem to. There we go. So it's actually added in two seconds of silence there. Useful for, you know, breaking things up. Maybe you spoke too fast, said two sentences too close together or something like that. You can insert a portion of silence to just lengthen the audio clip a little. You can also, when you're talking about silencing and deleting, what you need to be careful of is when you're doing that, if you were to silence things right here, for example, where the zero dB crossing isn't occurring, you're likely to get some 
basically a click sound here because the amplitude is suddenly changing right down to zero from high up here. So a way to avoid that is if you wanted to manipulate this part, you can find the zero crossing point by left clicking somewhere and then pressing Z and you'll see this line is going to skip to a zero crossing point. Here we go. So, so there's a zero crossing point. So that shouldn't create such a pronounced click or any click at all, perhaps. And you can also use that point now to make a selection. Let's say you wanted to do it somewhere around here. You wanted to get rid of this, this hill here, if you like. If we drag to, let's say, here, and we hit Z again, it should jump to, there we go, jump to the next zero crossing point. So. It's based on where the sort of cursor is at the time. And that is saying that there is the next zero crossing point. So here, for some reason, it hasn't actually got to zero. So we could take there, or we could take here. So then we could delete this part without getting any um, click sounds or such a pronounced jump in volume and amplitude. So that is find a zero crossing. Now, what we can also do is if we zoom right out again, we can fade in an audio clip by going, just making a selection. Then we can go to effects and fade in. And you see that just fades things down. If we're not quite happy with that, we want it to look a bit more faded in. We can just keep reapplying it. Um, you can also do that by um, hitting Control and R because that repeats the last uh, action you made. So. <laughs> I've uh, really made a quite a pronounced fade in now. But let's just go back again to the start. So that's fading in and out. You can you can fade out the end, you can fade in the beginning, whatever. Um, useful to know about. And what we can also do is split and join the audio file. And to do that, we're going to, let's, let's uh, zoom a little bit in, just so you can see what we're doing here. So let's imagine that we wanted to right here, between these two sentences, we wanted to create a split. So we're going to do that by hitting Control plus I. And you see now there's a black line that's appeared. And when I move away from there, you can see that black line. Now, what that means is, let's go back to the default zoom level now. What that means is that these two are now separate parts of the uh, track. They're separate clips. So if I now hit the Time Shift tool and we drag this around. Look, you can see now that it's two separate clips. Now we could drag that over here and insert something from, from, from down here into this gap, for example. Um, it gives you a lot of options on how to structure the, the file. Also, if we want to, we can join them back together again. So we put them back together. We see this black line. We'll go back to the selection tool. And if we just drag over the line there to make a selection, now if we hit Control plus J, it joins them back together again as they were before. So that should cover many of the most frequently used editing tools within Audacity. And you should now be able to take away things like this little click here. You should be able to restructure things if you realize you've spoken too fast and these two sentences are just jumbled together and they sound horrible. Or you want to insert something in here that um, an extra piece of audio or remove this piece. We've learned pretty much everything that you really need to know the basics of editing. So if you found this video useful, leave me a like and a comment and also subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell. And as always, guys, I really appreciate your time and I hope to see you in the next video where we'll learn how to remove unwanted noise from recordings using noise reduction and a noise gate. So I hope to see you there. Take care and thanks for watching.